Here we have a Honda Civic VTI Bigotti, a 97-96 model. The owner contacted this because look, it's been smoking like that. So the owner decided for a rebuild, so we brought in the car, we pulled out the engine, now it's on the stand. Here it is, all ready to be inspected and rebuilt. So yep, so now we're gonna check every single thing that could have caused that smoke, and of course, get it back to tip top shape like yeah, as if it's brand new so here it is we're disassembling it so hey we even talk and mentioned how much it cost the owner so you know you gotta check this out right so let's go let's go <laughs> Okay, let's start with the owner named Ralph messaged us here at the shop page. He, link will be in the description below for this page. Of course, he asked us about certain things and he inquired about overhaul, even top overhaul. And I told him the price is there. And also because the reason why we don't have top overhaul labeled there because top overhaul is around almost 60% of what the rebuild costs. So might as well do a rebuild, right? And of course, there are times when you have to do a top of they want to do a top overhaul mainly because they have a blown head gasket a lot of times it's either they've pulled the thread on the head stud or warped the block so it always ends up into a you know being an extensive work and so we kept talking and then he, he messaged me this he showed me this is a startup on a monday morning last week <laughs> And so I told him, you know, make it idle for like 30 to 40 minutes and this. So for 30 to 40 minutes, it's been idling. It still smoked like that. So on Tuesday, we kept talking. And by Wednesday, he decided to bring the car here on a Thursday last week. And so we were checking it and I find out he's had the car for just one month. He recently acquired it second hand and it's supposed to be all stock and hey, we can see the car itself aesthetically, it looks really good and really fresh. But he was just worried about the engine because he's not really into racing, but he actually wants to drive this around like in long drives or long road trips. And so get getting it stock and on top condition is really important. So we line it up now here Yes, this is around 2 p.m. on Thursday, and then by 5 p.m., the engine is off. It wasn't dark enough to turn on the lights, but it wasn't as bright as 2 p.m. So now here, the engine is on the stand. It's all ready. It's got a Skunk 2 cam gear. So it's technically stock, but it just has a cam gear, so it looks really good. I mean, pretty decent. And here you can see the exhaust port is quite dry. So, yep, now we're going to set the phone on the stand here and we start disassembling it we pull off the head first and do the rest all right okay so now let's go well let me show you something interesting here here on top dead on number one look the piston rocks it's pretty normal and the reason why i'm sharing this is because locally shape tree mechanics will always say may i look now or it's already shaking it needs oversized rings like what the hell if you're gonna use oversized rings might as well go oversized business rebore it and hone it right they don't share they don't suggest rebore because it's gonna get too expensive and their customer is gonna shy away and the thing is you don't need to run oversized rings here's look at it close and you can see the water jacket on the outer sleeve is pretty decent there's a few salt salt deposits but no corrosion so that's pretty decent we're just gonna have to clean it up a bit and tell the owner to always run coolant for the anti-rust so that's pretty good and the bore or the sleeve or the bore itself is actually pretty decent with let me see there's no ledge there so this is gonna be okay because we're gonna check it to the dial board gauge and then double check it to the machine shop and if it's all good we're gonna have it honed it's gonna be all good okay so if you're liking this video hit the like button because it helps the algorithm to spread it out to a wider audience and it's gonna be good for all of us here and of course and if you haven't subscribe this way you get updated whenever we have, we have a good or new video uploaded you can check it out and so you'll be part of our community so yep let's go let's go here let me show you something interesting so you know let's get this top dead let me show you something here 
as you can see when i push the piston there you can see there's oil there's oil above the piston rings that's gonna cause smoke and that's the number two ring oh there's nothing there so number two ring the oil scraper ring here not much there's a little bit as you can see that on the other one not much but the thing the reason why i showed this is because if this is do if the engine is doing this that's gonna smoke black smoke because the oil is gonna be on the chamber it's gonna burn oil and that's black but this one had white smoke so but this is already showing me that it's getting it's slowly getting to that stage so the reason why i say it's the oil scraper ring is because then we compression tested this before disassembly and it all one two three and four cylinder did over 200 psi so the top ring is doing its compression it's pretty good but the second ring is probably not scraping oil and we can talk more about we, we, we've talked more about that on this one here though we'll have it on the description below because we talked about piston rings and also rod bearing clearances main bearing clearances and all that so this, this will be in the description below for you okay all right so now let's continue okay there let me spin this Oh, it spins light. And yeah, of course, because the ba main bearings are slightly worn, but this would also show you if the crank is bent, you would feel it. So we always check it like that. And if it's spinning good or turning good, then we know we just need to get the oil clearance, clearance is good. No need to, you know, inspect or no need to change the crankshaft because this one is already good. All right, now my colleague is assembling the rest of it now pulling off the crank because you got the all the pistons one two three four removed all right let's check okay got the bearings there it's just still there in stock okay now later on well after wiping this we check the ring gaps because remember this showed 200 psi above 200 psi on all four so let's check it okay there you go hey here let me show you i'll clip the phone Look at this. The ring gap on the top ring is 0 0.015. Not bad, not bad for 230 kilometers mileage. And this has a log, the piston was shaking. So how are people, how are shade tree mechanics here saying may a log the pistol in these oversized rings? This has 0 0.015 ring gap. That is fine. Remember, we made 186 wheel horsepower on a, on a 0 0.016 ring gap. That is not bad. It still made power. The compression was still there. So I don't get why people, why Shade, Shade Tree always forces owners to do that and it damages the engine and becomes a piece of junk. So, yep, this is going to be good because we're going to have it honed. We're going to check the board first. It's going to be good. All right. Now let's look at the mains again. Let's look at it closer. Okay, it's a little oily, but you can see it's the, the wear is like perfect like you know it's kind of fresh right so yep wait let me wipe this off the oil wait hold on let me get this again here we go now it's all wiped up and you can see the bearing conditions are really really good this means the crank is near perfect so on the new bearings on the brand new main bearings we're going to check the clearances again just to make sure it's not too tight and all that so it's going to be really good and yes this is showing that the engine has a really really good condition and of course it got darker on the inside because you know on the previous owner probably didn't change oil too frequently but nothing so bad here now let's check the pistons here is piston number one as you can see we marked it up yes nothing too bad nothing unusual in the piston rings and look the rod bearings are, you know, the wear is pretty normal for 230 miles or 230,000 kilometers per mileage. So that's not bad, you know, nothing unusual here, nothing's broken. So this is pretty good. We know we're going to change to brand new piston rings and of course, brand new rod bearings. That'll be good. And of course, the second ring, the sharpness on the edge is no longer there. It, that means it's no longer scraping that good or at all and you can actually the video here and this one we did talk about that extensively and remember when i said they got to my place with the reserve near empty 
That's because the head gasket was already leaking. It wasn't leaking too much that it was overheating, but it was already consuming coolant. Uh, I explained to him that on cool down, it may start to contract and suck in coolant into the chamber. It may have, it may not blowing it out like you know blown like a usual blown gasket, but on cool down, it contracts, it sucks in coolant. So that's one problem. All right. So now let's go to the head. So check this out. Check what we found here. You can look closer. As you can see, there's oil traces. I call it oil because carbon is not sticking to it. You can see that, right? See? So, but it's not all the same here. On both valves, stems have it. And here, just two. But on the number two port, there's only one. So this is probably adding to the smoke aside from the coolant because the coolant is all always white but of course this is something that you gotta check and we're actually checking it it comes with the rebuild session or the rebuild package and of course as you notice this head is actually ported by i don't know who but it's imported inferior like badly so we're gonna try to work that and try to improve this and of course on the video on assembly when we get to finish this we'll also talk about that and explain that so technically this is actually a lucky incident for the owner because you know it's worth mentioning because i've seen incidents like this and owners would actually ask people online they would suggest that it's it might be the pcv system and whatnot and if you think about it the longer they check on that and they use the car every day the condition starts to get worse like imagine this one was not really you know finish, finishing up the reserve on the coolant but on the way here it was below half so that that's or just give it one more week is gonna probably gonna overheat or cause more damage. So that's gonna be more cost and more headache. And the owner said he had an older VTI that had a lot of problems. So this time he knew that he's just gonna go straight to us. So that's really a smart move, right? Now let's look at the head, the deck. Sorry, here you see. Oh, this one is supposed to be uh, about one millimeter deep, or 0 0.040 on average oh look so this is probably milled a little more than 0 0.040 of an inch where's the other side oh there you can see that dot is supposed to be one millimeter deep than the deck so this has been milled for over 1.040 of an inch or one millimeter and of course we have an older video that we talked about how to inspect that it is over here and yes, this will be in the description below, so don't worry about it. It'll be all be all good. And of course, this is gonna be really interesting because this rebuild will have OEM Honda OEM main bearings, rod bearings, and NPR piston rings, OEM Honda head gasket, and OEM Honda timing belt. This is gonna be a full OEM rebuild. This actually cost goes locally for the locals that's interested or wondering this costs the rebuild costs around between fifty thousand to fifty five thousand no more and this one actually went under fifty five thousand so ralph is kind of happy he's glad it's not going to cost an arm and leg because he was worried that his block might have issues but hey the engine is quite good and quite decent it just needs to be overlooked properly and be rebuilt well and properly this is to hopefully let the locals be more aware on the work that's needed to be done on rebuild this way and also they would understand it better to know how to avoid possible scammers or shade tree mechanics. So they have better knowledge now. So hopefully this helps good for them. And of course, this is mostly for enthusiasts and hobbyists and all that. But the hardcore enthusiasts or shop owners can actually go to our channel membership and join there for a more detailed stuff like you see it's written here and including dyno tuning and actual actual tuning talks with my laptop and everything else that i don't usually you know share out in public it's gonna be there exclusively so that'll be so good it's actually for the locals it's just 500 pesos for the top member that is not you know that's that's not bad for monthly so you know you guys want to go there right and as we continue with the rebuild, we'll do some a, a little bit of mods and work on that. And we'll actually take a footage of that. And as soon as the whole video is done, uh, it'll always be on the end screen on this video here. But for now, you can click here for another one.